Thanks, and now we have Elon Musk, Chief Engineer at NASA, uh, SpaceX. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, I think um, actually Steve said, said really um, all the really important things. I'm just really proud of the, the SpaceX team and the and honored to be partnered with uh, with NASA and uh, and and, and uh, helping with Jackson and ESA as well. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, just thr thrilled to be part of advancing uh, human spaceflight and uh, looking forward to um, yeah going going beyond uh, Earth orbit to the, the Moon and Mars. Um, and helping make uh, humanity a space bring civilization and uh, a multi planet species one day. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have Kathy Leaders, Associate Administrator for NASA's Human Exploration Operations Mission Directorate. Wow. I mean, I, I think I'm just always uh, amazed at the NASA and in particular the SpaceX team that diligently stepped through and got us ready to fly once again. And um, really want to thank Elon and the team um, from a HEO perspective and uh, responsible for lives after three crew flights. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's very, very intense. Um, I suppose it does get a little bit easier, but it's still extremely intense. And uh, I, I usually can't sleep the night before launch, and that's just true of the, the night before this one. So I haven't had much sleep. Um, but uh, you know, fortunately, we've got a great team that are really, um, really proud of the incredible work the team has done in partnership with NASA. And uh, yeah, I suppose it'll, it, it gets a little bit easier, but but still, still pretty intense, I have to say. <laughs> um, so um, yeah. I can't, I can't, it's hard to believe that uh, we're here doing this, quite frankly. You know, it feels like a dream. Thank you. And now we have Bill Hardwood with CBS. Thanks. Uh, and, and again, congratulations to all of you uh, for this launch. Three Crew Dragon flights in less than a year is it's quite a record. And, and I guess for Mr. Musk, I realize. This current flight is less than two hours old right now, but can you tell us anything about the schedule for the next flight, the inspiration uh, for launch schedule? And, and one question I think a lot of us have is, is how do you do that flight without working with NASA? I mean, in terms of the crew quarters and suit up and facilities in general. Thanks. Um, yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll still be obviously uh, coordinating with NASA and, and uh, the, the that'll be you know, sort of a, a free flyer mission with um, – a, a, a kind of a big uh, kind of glass dome on the front instead of a docking adapter. So it should give a quite a different feel for like to really you should really feel like you're you're in space more than one you know because it'll just be you just surrounded by a glass um, or acrylic technically. But um, yeah, so yeah, we're looking forward to that mission. Um, but obviously, still be work you know working in coordination with NASA for that mission. So. Um, that that should be, hopefully, like as the name suggests, uh, inspiration. You know, and I, actually, you know, I think that's the that's the thing about you know human spaceflight is that it's it's one of those things that makes people excited about the future. Uh, you, you know, you look forward to you know we wake up in the morning and think, hey, what's going to be great about the future? It's like, man, if we're out there and we're a spacefaring civilization, and and visiting other planets and those ex exciting planets, I think that's that's what gets one of those things that gets people fired up. You know, yeah, certainly gets me fired up, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Now we have Eric Berger with Ars Technica. Hi, good morning, and congratulations to uh, to everyone on this. Um, a couple of questions. First of all, maybe for for Steve Stitch, can you comment on the fact that you know, in less than four years, I guess, or it's been about four years since SpaceX first launched a Falcon 9 rocket for the second time, the SCS-10 mission. Um, has it been a, a rapid process to try to get to the certification of the Falcon 9, you know, uh, previously flown rockets for crew? And, and Elon, can you comment on the uh, Human Landing System Award last Friday? You know, how important is it to SpaceX that NASA showed that kind of confidence in Starship and, and is now talking about using the vehicle for the moon and, and potentially Mars? Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the first question regarding the certification of the Falcon 9. You, you know, for the, 
for the first flight for Demo 2 for Bob and Doug, we had gone through a certification of the, of the rocket uh, for that very, for one flight. So we had started to understand the systems. We actually follow the whole fleet of all the flights that SpaceX flies. SpaceX has been a great partner in sharing data in every single flight, and we were able to look at the performance. So over time, we started to understand uh, how the engines perform, how the rocket itself performs. And then in a partnership with SpaceX, we went through and looked at uh, every single piece of the launch vehicle, uh, the engines, uh, the structures, uh, everything about the reentry and the heating. And we were able to, uh, in about 10 months, go through uh, on the order of 400 or so certification products. Uh, in addition to those products delivered by SpaceX, we also did our independent analysis of certain key components from a structural perspective. We looked at the, the heating for entry and, and did an independent uh, assessment of that to make sure that we were comfortable with the, with the margins. And so it was a, quite an extensive effort in 10 months by our team and an incredible partnership between NASA and SpaceX. And Elon? Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's a great honor to be chosen by NASA to uh, return uh, people to the moon. Um, it's been now almost half a century since humans were last on the moon. It's too long. We need to get back there and, and, uh, and have a permanent base on the moon. I think a, a, like a big permanently occupied base on the moon. And, uh, and then build a city on Mars and become a space ring, you know, like a space ring civilization, a multi-planet species. We don't want to be one of those single planet species. We want to be a multi-planet species. Um, you know, so, yeah. Thank you. Now we have Irene Klotz with Aviation Week. Thanks, Jackie, and congratulations. That was a really exotic launch this morning. Um, for Elon, um, how will the uh, funding from HLS impact your design and development and schedule for Starship and what's been kind of your technological challenge challenges with the project so far? Well, I mean, this is definitely really helpful in um, funding this, the Sasha program. Um, it's mostly been funded internally thus far, um, and it's pretty expensive. Um, as you can tell, if you've been watching the videos, we've, you know, blown up a few of them. Um, so uh, excitement guaranteed, um, <laughs> one way or another. Um, so it's, it's a... It, it's a tough uh, vehicle to build because we're we're trying to crack this nut of uh, a, a rapid and fully and ra you know fully and rapidly reusable rocket. And I apologize, I'm a, I'm a little slow enough to take care of them. Going on, not much sleep at all. Um, but the the thing that's really important to revolutionize space is a, ra a rapidly reusable rocket. That's reliable too. <laughs> um, so that's really what what needs to happen. Um, if that if, if that can be done, then the the cost of access to uh, orbit and beyond can be reduced by potentially a factor of a hundred or more. So um, that's that's really what 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 is um, most important about. It's got to be done by some, somebody's got to do this. Um, and uh, and if and if that is if you have rapid and complete reusability, then that that opens up. That's, that is the gateway to the heavens. That's what matters. That's what we're trying to get done. And the support of NASA is, make, makes a huge difference. Thank you. To media on the line, just a reminder to focus your questions this morning on the Crew 2 mission. That would be greatly appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Joey Roulette with The Verge. Hey, thanks, Jackie, and congrats, everyone, on a, on a good launch. This questions for Elon Musk. Um, from your perspective, I was just wondering if you are plugged in or if you have any idea what the holdup on getting an agreement with the Russians for flying cosmonauts on Crew Dragon is. Uh, would you like to see cosmonauts flying on Crew Dragon sooner than later? And uh, since HLS was mentioned earlier, I just was just wondering um, how soon will Starship be able to put humans on the moon? Thanks. I, I do not have any insight on, on the, with regard to the cosmos, but of course we would be, uh, you know, honored to fly um, cosmonauts on Dragon. Um, but I do not uh, have any insight into 
any potential objections. I, I'm not sure, perhaps this may be just a communications uh, breakdown. I don't know. Um, but uh, I don't have any insight into it. I mean, it's we're we're actually working through the agreements right now, and I think people understand. And I think we talked about this in the post FR news conference that people understand the importance of, you know, crew swaps for supportability of ISS, and so we're working through that um, and getting that agreement in place. It, it takes a while sometimes. I found out there's lots of people to coordinate with. So it <laughs> doesn't happen as fast probably as I want it to. Um, but it's, it's, we're working through it. Thank you. And now we have Stephen Clark with Space Flight Now. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to everyone. Uh, my question is for Elon Musk as well. Um, this was the first time uh, you've launched astronauts on a reused Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon, although it's far from the first time you've done that for, you know, overall through your flight history. Uh, I'm curious, uh, you know, as you develop Starship uh, to, to focus on that rapid and full reusability as you're flying your manifest with Falcon 9, um, how many missions do you think you can get out of a Falcon 9 booster? Um, and is that something you're, you're willing to push the limit on to, you know, keep flying one until it breaks or, um, you know, for a Starlink mission, for example, or, or are you, do you see like a, a, a plateau or a ceiling in terms of flight number for a Falcon 9 booster going forward? Well, that doesn't seem to be, um, there doesn't, doesn't seem to be any uh, obvious limit to the uh, reusability of the, the vehicle. Um, and yeah, we do intend to fly the Falcon 9 booster until we see some kind of a failure with the Starlink missions, obviously just to have that be a life leader. Um, and we're just actually talking in the in the control room. Uh, so we're talking with the um, between SpaceX and NASA, and we're like wondering, you know, what like what's the optimal number of launches for? You know, do you want to be on a on a brand new booster, or well, you probably don't want to be on the life leader for for a crew mission. <laughs> um, but uh, but you know, it's probably good to have a, a, a flight or two under its belt for the booster to have flown you know once or twice. I think if it was like a you know an aircraft. Uh, coming out of an aircraft factory, you'd want the aircraft to probably have gone on a test flight or two before, you know, you put passengers on. So, uh, you know, I think that's probably, you know, a couple of flights is a good number to have for a, for a crew booster. And, um, and, and in the meantime, we'll, we'll keep flying the, uh, the life leader. We've got nine flights on one of the boosters. We're going to have a tenth flight soon with a Starlink mission. And, um, yeah, we're learning a lot about reusability and it's, it's a hard problem for rockets. I mean, there's a reason it's not it, it's really, you know, right now, Falcon 9 is the only um, partially reusable rocket being flown, you know, with the booster coming back and the, the fairing coming back. But we still can't, we don't reuse the upper stage or the dragon trunk. And so with the Starship, we're aiming to just like hopefully, hopefully reuse the whole thing. Um, but it's, this is a hard problem for rockets, that's for sure. And it's taken us, uh, we're like 19 years in now. Um, but I, I think the I think we can see I, the the Starship design can work. It, it's just it's a hard thing to solve, um, and the support of NASA is very much appreciated in this regard. Um, I don't know. I, th I think it's gonna I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna work. Thank you. And next up, we have David Curley with the Discovery Channel. Hi there, sorry, unmuting. Um, for anybody, NASA or SpaceX, uh, was Bob Behnken allowed to leave anything for Megan in the Dragon? And Elon, uh, it's been a long journey uh, with the HLS and everything else. On the arc of what you're hoping to do, are you going faster or slower? I know you had some frustrations early, but where do you see bigger picture we are and where we need to go? Thank you. I guess I'll, I'll take the question of Bob. You know, uh, I don't know of anything specific that he left for Megan. Um, he certainly left a lot of uh, love, tenderness, and care of that vehicle while he flew it. And, you know, for me as the program manager for Commercial Crew, it's, it's pretty exciting to see, you know, Bob having flown that vehicle for the first time, testing it out, 
and uh, taking it for a spin for his wife Megan, and she gets to take it for a little longer. So it's it's kind of cool um, to, to see the two fly in the same vehicle, uh, and the first time that we've reused that vehicle. So. Yeah, uh, actually, I don't know if people saw the the zero G indicator this time, which is uh, this uh, cute fluffy penguin called my my first penguin. Um, you know, it's this cute cute fluffy penguin that's floating around in zero G right now. Um, I don't know if there's a picture of that, but it's it, kind of cute. Um, and then, let's see, I mean, uh, it's, yeah, it's been 19 years uh, since starting SpaceX, and uh, certainly a lot of adventures along the way, some some tough times and a lot of good times. Um, I'd say it's only recently, though, that I, I think that I, I, I feel that uh, full and rapid reusability can be accomplished. Um, I wasn't sure for a long time, but I'm sure now. Thank you. And next up, we have Jeff Faust with Space News. Uh, good morning. Uh, question for Elon Musk. Um, you know, it took years of development to get the Crew Dragon to the point where you could have a successful series of missions like uh, Crew 2 this morning. Uh, at what point do you think Starship will be ready to start carrying people? Thanks. Well, we, I think we are trying to keep the questions to uh, – you know, we're limited to, to this, you know, this mission, but um, it's difficult to speculate with respect to, I, I mean, I don't know, I, I mean, if, I tend to be, as as you know, I tend to be somewhat optimistic with respect to schedules. Uh, um, I, f I feel I should acknowledge this. Uh, <laughs> um, but, um, you know, so take that with a grain of salt, but um, I, th I think it's not out of the question that it could be ready for flying Fly people in a couple of years. Obviously, we need we need to like not be making craters, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, otherwise, it's like hop in, we're we're going to Mars. No, not quite, not yet. <laughs> um, it's got some work to do, but making making rapid progress. I think if the we got to make sure we're we're accelerating the rate of innovation, and then it, it could be ready in a couple of years. Thank you. Now we have Eric Nyler with Wired. Uh, greetings. Uh, congratulations to everybody. Um, Senator Bill Nelson mentioned a, a 2024 uh, timetable for, for a, a lunar landing uh, through HLS during a, a confirmation hearing on Capitol Hill. And I'm just wondering uh, from Elon whether that's a kind of a crazy talk or is that uh, something you feel optimistic about? I, I think that can be done. Um, yeah, I, I think so. Um, I mean, I think we're, yeah, we're we're we're, build, we're building going to build a lot of rockets, and we're going to probably smash a bunch of them. But um, I can, I think I think this I think it will happen. I think twenty twenty four. This seems likely. We're going to aim for sooner than that, but I think, uh, you know, I think we this this is this is actually doable. Yes. Thanks. We have time for one more question, Camden Hall from Talk of Titusville. Thanks for taking my question. My question is for Elon. Where were you watching the launch from? Were you in the LTC like you were for demo two or somewhere else? Thanks. Um, yeah, I was in launch control and the, the, yeah, it's funny. It's the same. It's the same same place. The, the same launch control at where the, the lunar missions were launched from. You know, it's pretty wild. It's the same windows, same glass. Um, so it's a little hard to see out at night. Uh, during the day, it's a lot easier to see out. The, the view from the the roof is actually better from the than the view from launch control. Um, but you get to see all the data there. So. Yeah. I don't know. The future's looking good. Like we're, I think we're at the dawn of a new era of space exploration. Thank you again to all of our speakers and to our reporters. That's going to wrap things up for us here. Our Crew 2 mission coverage continues on NASA TV. We'll have live coverage all the way to the International Space Station.